Hey, what's going on guys? So today we're working on getting the big brake kit that I mentioned in the previous video onto the Mark II. Now these, just to refresh your memory, these are the UCF20 Celsius or LS400 calipers. Um, there are four piston big brake kit essentially for a lot of other Toyotas and stuff like that. So I've already done the driver's side. I actually did that um, the last few days. Um, it took me a little while to figure out a few things and I did stuff up on one bit with the offset nuts that offset the caliper um, so that the bigger rotor can actually fit underneath. Now today we'll be working on the passenger side and I'll try and do a bit of a guide. It's not going to be exactly a full rundown or DIY of installing these calipers but it might give you an idea of what's involved. So as I mentioned this is the driver's side. I've already got the caliper on and um, obviously the nice DBA T3 rotors underneath. So now these are actually quite tricky to align with the offset nuts and make sure that the caliper bolts don't cross thread through the offset nut. I'll show you what I mean when I get to the other side but I did actually end up having to get a whole set of new offset nuts just so that I could get these calipers back on. Um, the other thing is these wheels are decent, decently sized and offset but they still only have about a 2mm uh, clearance to the caliper so just be mindful of that. Now I also just wanted to mention that obviously if you've got a bigger rotor, bigger caliper your stock spare wheel may not fit over them anymore so there's a few options out there um, just do your research and find out what best suits. For the JZX I think um, there's a particular space saver that a lot of people use I think out of an R33 Skyline but once I actually get my hands on one that works on this, um, I'll let you guys know either on Instagram or through YouTube as to what rim I ended up using as my spare. So anyway, back to this side, I've um, got the car jacked up and on jack stands. Now, I went with QFM A1RM. So QFM is actually um, Queensland Friction Materials and they're here local to us. They actually make some really great um, brake pads and stuff. This is the A1RM which is a little bit more track focused. Um, I used to use a QFM HPX in the JZX100 and they were great for daily use and a little bit of spirited driving but I've heard these are a lot better for um, sort of mild track. There's definitely better ones than this but this is probably going to suit my use of this car. Now as part of the rebuild kit now I didn't video rebuilding the calipers but as part of the kit I also bought the shims that I needed to go along with the brake pads and I might leave a link to basically all the parts um, that I use for the rebuild down in the description so if you, if you guys ever need to order them um, you can grab it from there now keep in mind some of the rebuild kits come with extra things obviously for the Celsius that you may not use in other cars the Celsius has a low pad uh, little sensor this is um, just a little bracket that's used as part of that. Obviously I don't use it in my car because we don't have that in the JZX110. And also these, they're meant to actually go over the brake pad but what I found was once once the shims and the pads are together uh, this didn't actually allow that whole setup to fit through into the caliper so I haven't used these. I've hung on to it just in case I find another way to actually use it. Maybe I'm not putting it in properly. But according to the diagrams I found online, um, yeah, this just doesn't fit. Or maybe my actual pads are a bit too big um, because it's actually the width. It's actually the width this way that changes when you put this on. And yeah, I can't get it to slide in if I've got them on. <clears throat> now for the rotors, I've got DBA um, Disc Brakes Australia T3 uh, rotors, which are basically the the slotted ones. So a little bit of an unboxing, um, they come with a couple of DBA stickers, the instructions and bed-in procedure I think are in here, and the actual rotor. I'll just open that up. So that's the DBA T3 Celsius rotor there. It's a little bit bigger than the stock ones, I think these are 313 mil. the stock ones are about 290 something. Okay anyway so I'm now gonna start pulling apart the stock brakes. 
Now there's a few things that I need to actually cut. Um, one of them is the brake heat shield that goes around the rotor. Um, some people cut it in a way that they can keep it. I'm cutting it in a way that I'm removing it for now just because it's in the way and I'm cutting it in a way that I can actually reuse it if I decide to cut it properly to shape. Um, but at the moment I don't see any benefit of it because I'd be having to cut so much of it that the advantages of having it there are probably minute. So I'm going to just uh, cut that out and remove it as well as remove the stock um, caliper itself. I'll probably disconnect the stock caliper um, a lot later once I've actually lined everything up. But yeah, I'll, I'll take the wheel off. Uh, I'll take the wheel off, unscrew the calipers, take the um, rotor off. With the offset nuts, as I mentioned before, I actually had a bit of an issue where if it doesn't line up exactly perfectly, um, it can actually start cross-threading as it grabs onto the side of the caliper hole or the spindle hole for the caliper bolt. Hopefully that doesn't happen on this side. Um, but if it does, I'll show you guys uh, what you need to do to make sure it works. Okay, got the wheel off. Um, hopefully you can see back here. Okay, it's hard to see back here, but you can see the um, roll center adjusters that I put in. And right next to it is the bottom bolt for the caliper. There's also another one um, just here. They're 17 mil, and that's what I'll be removing now. To make it easier, to make it a little bit easier to reach, what I've done is actually turn the steering wheel a little bit. Now to be able to reach the top bolt, I actually have to turn the wheel quite a bit. That's the bolt there. Now these are the ones if you're not careful you can cross thread and they're very hard to come by sometimes. Um, so, be, so just be careful. Now with those two bolts off, um, the caliper should sort of just slide out. And what I do is, um, you sort of just sit it on the steering arm and that just keeps some tension off the line. Now this should, sometimes it can just pull straight off, otherwise you need to get an M8 bolt and just sort of screw it in one by one and that will help you take it off, which you might go and find now. Actually I didn't even need to do that, I hit it once or twice with a mallet and now it's off. It's a little bit rusty here so I might just give it a quick go with um, a wire brush, just clean it up a little bit and then we'll start working on removing this guy. Now just for comparison's sake, that's the DBA T3 Celsius rotor and that's the stock Mark II rotor. Once the wire brush is done, just give it a quick clean with some uh, wax and grease remover. Alright, so now I'm going to try and remove the um, brake dust shield. There's a way you can cut it uh, just here and along here on the thin part. And then once you remove the bolts, it should actually wiggle out. And you're basically maintaining the main shape of the heat shield. But um, it's, it's in a way that you can actually slide it back on once I've cut it to shape if I need to later on. So that's what I'm going to do now. Going to be using the Dremel and a little cutting bit 
Remember to always use um, safety glasses. And let's get cutting. I don't know if you can see that, but there's one cut there and one there. Neither of them have actually gone all the way through, but the idea is um, you make most of the cut that you can, and then should be able to sort of wriggle it and have it break off. Okay, so now that that piece has been cut out, there's just four bolts um, with, it's almost like an Allen key head that you'll need to get to and undo. So I'll undo them now. So once the final bolts are removed from there, you should just be able to sort of bring it forward. just bring it forward and find a way to wriggle it out so that's the hitch over there and once you're done don't forget to put those little bolts back um, just in case you ever need to put it back in just in case you ever need to put that heat shield back in and you don't want dirt to get all in those uh, threads while I'm here, I'm just going to clean this off. There's quite a bit of gunk, I'm guessing from old uh, brake dust or something built up. Okay, so this is the um, Celsius caliper that I mentioned earlier I was uh, repainting and it was outside. Now what I've done is lined up um, the offset nuts, basically how the same direction as I'm going to press them in. They come in two different uh, directions, the ones that I bought, so you can see it's basically facing away from each other um, and that's how I'll be pressing them in. Now to press them in, there's multiple ways you can do it. Um, if you've got access to an actual press, you can press it in um, or I'll be actually using a clamp and just sort of driving it in by tightening it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll show you guys once it's all pressed in and ready to mount. Now once it is pressed in though, um, you can still use um, you can still use a shifter or spanner to sort of rotate it. It does take a lot of effort um, to rotate once it's in there but sometimes you do have to just so it lines up with the um, stock spindle holes that you can see there. So I managed to press in one of them um, using the clamp method but this one seems to not want to go any further so what I'm actually doing is I've got the original bolt, a bit of a spacer and then the, um, the offset nut on the other side and I'll see if I can capture it going in. Okay, now that's fully in, I'm just going to back out the bolt. And that's essentially how the finished product should look. Now I might need to just rotate the offset um, nut slightly, just to line up with the spindle as I mentioned before. But I'm just going to try and do a test fit and see where they are at the moment. So as you can see, it's now pressed in and aligned as best as I could. I'm now going to try and test fit it onto the actual spindle. So I've got the caliper mounted up, um, doing a bit of a test fit. And you can see it all, you can see it all lines up properly now. 
Um, so now I'm just going to remove that, get the DBA rotor, put that on, and actually start mounting this on properly. Um, I might also just get all the bits and pieces ready for the pads so that once I've got the rotor on I can put the caliper on, slide the pads in and then just change over the brake line to this caliper. Okay, that caliper's off. I'm just going to line up the rotor. Put a, just put a couple of lug nuts on here so that it stays in place and now we can mount the caliper back on now this is where you have to be careful because you can cross thread them what what you need to do is one by one, do a little bit on the bottom, do a little bit on the top bolt. And that just ensures that everything goes in uh, evenly because the clearances are quite tight with the offset nut. So the rotor and the caliper is now on and you can see the clearance to the top of the caliper is actually quite um, quite tight but that's okay it was the same on the other side and now what I'm going to do is prepare all of the stuff for the brake pad get that all slotted in and then we can look at changing over the brake line so with the pads, um, this one's going to be sliding in like this on the front side and what you have is two pieces that goes on there and this one goes on top. The arrow always points up, um, so this is the, the back side of it, prepared the same way, arrow points up. Now it also comes with um, some grease. Now there, there's lots of different warnings about this grease, about it being toxic but make sure you're wearing gloves and you spread it on between the two plates as well as the pad itself and I think that's just meant to stop um, any noise over time so I'm just going to do that now and then there's also two pins that I need to get that they'll all slide through so I'll prepare all of that and I'll come back in a second basically I've put the two pads in either side um, it just needed some help with a bit of uh, light hammering to get it in to the right spots. Now you get these two pins and also a little clip. So all you do is take the pins through the pads and it comes out the back. Now keep in mind these have these small holes on them as well, um, which the uh, clip will go through in the end. basically and then you will just try and fit these in as best as possible oh, looks like that one goes on the bottom like that like that and like that Okay, so that's all in. Now all that's left to do is swap over the brake line from that one to over here. Now in the rebuild kit it did come with some copper washers, um, whereas with the JZX 110 you've actually got this nice uh, double-ended washer. Um, it sort of slips on the banjo bolt. I'm going to keep the JZX 110 one and just replace and just place it straight into the bolt hole on the new calipers. Now just a bit of advice, it's probably a good idea to put your caliper 
into a bucket of some sort because when you undo that brake line it's going to start spewing out brake fluid and keep in mind that you never want to touch brake fluid and then touch the car's body so keep a lot of rags around to wipe your hands um, because it will actually melt the paint Okay, so that bolt's on there now. I'm just going to tighten it with the ratchet. And double check it with this. We'll check it. Yep. Forgot to put this guy on too. It's called an anti rattle spring. Um, basically, just sits under there. I'll show you how it fits. I'll put it on. Okay, there it is. Basically, you slip one side in, and then you have to push it down and slide another pin through and then put the clip on at the end. One last thing I forgot to mention was these are the stock uh, nuts that are in where the offset nuts go. You will need to get these pressed out. I tried to get them out um, with tools I had at home and I couldn't do it. So yeah, just remember that one. You'll have to get these pressed out when you buy Celsius calipers and then you put the offset nuts in where these used to be. Now I'm not actually going to bleed the brakes today, I'm going to need a friend to help me out with that one. So I think I'll end the video here for now. Um, but basically you saw uh, the main process of how to put these calipers on. Now the key things you need are those RCA, the roll center adjusters that I did in the last video. The offset nuts, obviously the calipers, new rotors and brake pads. And it's a pretty straightforward install apart from that. If you have any other questions about this install or if you need to know where to get specific parts or the rebuild kit from, I might leave some information down in the description as well of this video. And if there's anything else, leave a comment. I'll get back to you shortly. Thanks again for watching everyone. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one.